A presence can be felt by those who have followed the epic saga as told by the insane clown posse. It is a presence that is synonymous with the crumbling of time itself. Thus emerges a being so powerful that he can exist between both the land of the living and that of the dead. He goes by many names, but is known to the living only as the Rain. Walks upon worlds forgotten and descends from heaven's faded to gray to witness the death of all mortal things so that he may guide the departed upon the path that they have chosen. Here is the story of the path to Shangri La, the six Joker's card. Only now will we truly understand the meaning of the saga, for this saga all along, each Joker's card is actually none other than. The echo of our lives. What up, y'all? DC Vago guy. It's time to jump back in and start doing requests. Now, this one came from Juggalo9240, and he requested it right before the takeover. He said, If you got time, can you do both Wraiths? Or if you can do, if you can, you can do them after the hostile takeover. So patiently, he's waited what he thought was going to be a month, turned into two months. Let's not disappoint this motherfucker. Let's jump right in. This is the Wraith Shangri-La. Came out back in 2002. The Almighty Six Jokers card. The end of an epic saga. And in a lot of ways, this is kind of a controversial album. Just because of the message, the meaning behind it all that they've been building up for the past... The, the ten years of the point that this came out. A lot of motherfuckers thought there was something more to it. And it turns out they, you know, they were saying... That the Dark Carnival is God. Everything behind what they do is God. Now, I'm not by myself. I'm not a religious person. I personally don't believe in the God that everyone else does. But, I mean, it didn't piss me off the way they ended it. I thought it was pretty cool. Just because of the beliefs I do have. It still stays kind of true to, to my beliefs, anyway. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look into the actual art. Or into the actual album and stop talking about like the meaning behind it and shit. So there you go. There's the Wraith on the front. Fucking awesome looking Grim Reaper style. Reaching his hand out for you to take it. And pass on to the afterlife. Or in this case into Shangri-La. Because he is holding his hand out welcomely. Book Swan, Crow, everything is pretty cool. It was pretty cool how they came up with this. This was actually, if you did not know, this was actually originally designed by Shaggy 2 Dope. Back in the day when he was doing tag in there around Detroit, he actually designed something very similar to this. And uh, back then, his little call name was Joe Sky Love. So if you didn't know that, now you know that this actually is this was actually already something he made like fucking twenty or like fifteen twenty years prior to it actually ever coming out. So that's kind of cool. Uh, on the back, you got the track listings in the form of a reverse six. And they are, oh, fuck, I just like started reading that way, sorry guys. Walk into the light, welcome to the show, get your wicked on, murder rap, birthday bitches, happy birthday all things juggalo, blam, it rains diamonds, the staleness, hail's forecast, juggalo homies, ain't y'all business, we belong, and that motherfucker's cracked, uh, cotton candy and popsicles, the... Crossing the bridge. Sorry, guys. It's fucking hard to read. Uh, the Raven's Mirror, The Wraith, and Thy Unveiling. Of course, there's the controversial track where they talk about the meaning behind it all. The whole time being God. So, you've actually got right there a little logo for Super Villains. And actually, uh, right there at the end of HL Bidness is a little Super Villains track slash sampler. So... Let's go ahead and take a look on the inside. Now I did do some customizations because beforehand I did have the one that had the seminar in it. And I ended up buying the other version that has the concert back on Juggalo Day this year. So I did put, I did take the other case and kind of do some customizations. And now both the DVDs are here. So when you buy it you can either get it with, this one is the seminar. That one has the concert and it was uh, actually at the gathering of the Juggalos. 2002 so there's them with their new face paint I didn't I didn't like this right here I kind of loved the original I always I never cared for the changing it up even with twisted I mean I thought it was kind of cool that they always changed their shit up a little bit but I'm kind of 
kind of a fan of original shit, I guess. So, right there behind there, you got just some clouds, you know, because you made it into heaven and shit. Inside, here you got a very basic kind of nothing to it. That's actually, I like the way that kind of looks. Just plain as fuck, but a shiny ass gold hatch, man. So, on the inside, and this is the first time they've ever actually put their song lyrics in any of their books, ever. So, uh, in a way, this is this was a milestone in the fact of it's the first time they ever did something like that. So, before I flip through, let's just take a look. They're kind of dressed up like they're supposed to be angels. There's fucking Shaggy floating around or flying around like an angel. So you just got your track listings, or I mean your uh, track lyrics, and then the credits are down below. So I'll just kind of flip through this, let you guys take a look. Fucking shaggy right there. Murder Rap, that was actually originally a uh, Above the Law song, if you didn't know that. I think that's fucking. That's a fucking fresh ass axe and chainsaw. Fucking love that shit. It's pretty sweet. It's all about that merchandise. What, bitch? It's pretty sweet. The stay on is. And then actually, the health forecast. This isn't like officially like a hell's pit song but it does kind of it's basically a story about jay waking up in his bed and everything's like fucked up in his room and then he walks outside and everything's like chaotic and shit and it turns out in the very end he was dead and he was in hell that was his hell's pit when he thought maybe everyone else died it turns out actually he was the one that was dead Pretty cute, pretty cute. See right there, that's like a, a shot of that fucking beautiful axe. And then of course you got the villain right there, and then them chilling with Alex. If you guys have no idea who Double A is, Alex Abbas, do your homework real quick. Go find out who he is. This dude, if it wasn't for this dude, this never would have happened. So. Go learn who the fuck he is and pay your respects. I mean, he's not dead, but still, if it wasn't for him, none of this shit would have ever happened. And then, of course, right here, you got a little excerpt from Behind the Paint where they talk about what Dedicated to the Butterfly was, which was pretty cool, you know, because I'm sure a lot of motherfuckers never knew what it had to do with anything. So there you go. There's the contents of the album itself. Everything, every song on this album is fucking good. The only one I every now and again have to skip just because I'm not like in the mood for it is The Staleness. And sometimes I gotta skip through Cotton Candy and Popsicles. I mean, it just wasn't as good as Cotton Candy to me. So, Otherwise, the whole album is definitely a listen through all the way kind of album. We Belong is my jam. I know you guys heard me talk about that in a previous... Uh, daily spirits video but there you go absolutely if you do not do not do not have this i don't know what the fuck you're waiting on definitely pick it up and actually definitely um it's definitely something good to look forward to when they do the joker card box set because they're officially doing that shit now and you know i know i don't know i, I want to get it i definitely want to get it i'm gonna have to wait and see what the price looks like though even though i have all the joker cards I, I imagine the fucking box set being like this big ass box, like the size of the uh, Quest for Shangri La box board game that the box came in. Something big like that, and like little inserts for each of the CDs with like a book in the middle. That's just kind of how I'm envisioning it right now, even though I know I'll probably be let down. It probably won't be anything like that, something different. But that's kind of what I'm hoping for. So, uh, one thing I'm going to talk to you guys about real quick is the DVDs. My recommendation, if you're going to only, if you can only pick up one, and you were like me, I fought for so long on, damn, what the fuck, which one should I get? Should I get the concert or should I get the seminar? 
and I'm gonna go have to gonna have to go ahead and say if you're only able to get one, pick up the seminar because in that they actually Jay actually talks about their career all the way up to the sixth, and then they finally it's the seminar where they unveil what the wraith looks like and they talk about it and shit. So it's definitely that's definitely the one I would recommend getting is the seminar, just because it's pretty fuck cool. And at one point in the show, they actually end up getting this big ass fucking joint from one of the jugglers in the crowd, and they pass it around. They each take a hit because they had a uh, fucking twisted blaze, ABK, uh, legs diamond came up on the stage. They had a lot of motherfuckers up there. Basically, everyone who helped get ICP to this stage that they were at. So it was, it was definitely fucking cool to see. So I'm gonna say, if you can only get one, definitely pick up the one with the seminar. If you can get both, I would say go ahead and do it. But definitely hit up a sale or something. That way you can get one discounted like I did. So there you go. This is the Wraith Shangri-La. I'm going to go ahead and do the Wraith Hell's Pit. Just to kind of put them together. And I might even just throw in the Wraith Remix album. So for now this has been DC Fago Guy. Thanks for watching y'all.